sure. All right. When last we left off, uh, you would come out of the swamps into uh, the small uh, town of Ethel Celebrin. Uh, Ethel Celebrin is surrounded, uh, as I've said, by a square wooden palisade. Uh, the town is small, no more than two dozen wooden buildings, and a single gate flanked by two tall wooden towers. Uh, bowmen uh, appear in the tower and two guards with pikes stand at the gate. Uh, a large road running east-west as well as north lies just outside the town gate. Uh, inside, you are let in, a collection of folk, most having some kind of Easterling look to them, although their fashion leans more toward Dunland, move about uh, during, doing their daily tasks. In the center of the town is a small park with several, several trees uh, and uh, flower beds surrounded by a well-used well. Uh, a few shops can be seen here or there, uh, and you do not see a lot of living quarters here, but there are, there are obviously buildings outside the, the wall. Um, probably farmsteads and stuff like that. Uh, it's obviously, but ob it's obvious that this village has been built for trade, and uh, that trade uh, runs through this crossroad um, which you have come into. So, uh, again, you're you're as far east as basically anybody has been, save Karen Thier at some ungodly age in the past, the primordial dawn of time when the two trees were still. <laughs> Uh, up. Uh, he might have been somewhere here, but this is as far east as certainly anybody has ever dreamed, except for, I guess, uh, Aramir, because he's from Dor Dorwinian, and Dorwinian is north of here, so I guess technically he would be somewhere to the east. But nevertheless, um, you do now, uh, it's during the day, so you do kind of have uh, the run of the town. Um, I uh, I'm going to put up a map for you so you can take a look at um, Ethel Celebrin. It's kind of a weird map because it's so old uh, the way that they did it. Uh, but so the the legend of it is kind of goofy, um, but I do have what everything is. So uh, you might have to kind of take a look at that. And uh, you, uh, if you have any questions on it, uh, let me know. But uh, So this is like an old school map map? Old school Mert map. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, but see, this is what it does. Like, it, it gives you numbers, but then they don't correspond to anything here. They, <laughs> they don't give you the number. <laughs> they like, okay, is this hotter? Uh, what does that look like? I got to match that up with the color. Yeah. Uh -huh. 15 would be hardware. And then, yeah. So that's kind of the way this <laughs> It's a goofy old uh, Mert map. Still cool, uh, but nevertheless. So you've come in this main gate here. Um, and you see on one and two, uh, there are uh, stables that flank you on either either way. One is one of them is marked as Bregor's stables, and the other one is Ed Wilbur's stables. Um, obviously, you have no um, horses with you at this point. They've all been killed uh, over the course of the time that you had had them or abandoned or whatever the case may be. Um, you see one guy's working in the stables. Uh, at Bregor's, he's kind of watching you guys uh, as you walk through, um, but I mean, obviously not giving you an evil eye or anything, just watching new people move into the town. Uh, and then you can kind of uh, move into the interior. You can see that the well there in the center, it actually has a, a little garden around it, not put into the map itself. Um, but uh, if you have any uh, questions, comments, or anything like that, um, Feel free to engage me in those as you take a look kind of here at the, the map. This little tiny village has a brothel? It does. <laughs> it's like just like one person in there. <laughs> I'm what you get, honey. We know what we're we know where Karen Thier's mind is. It's already at the brothel. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the brothel. Where is the brothel? Uh, 17 uh, looks like. Yeah, or, seven, or six, maybe. No, 17 right here. Yeah. Kind of tucked behind uh, 18 and 19, which are the, the in, there are two ends, 19 and 18 are the two ends in the town. Uh, 18, 18 is called the Three Rubies, and 19 is called um, the Mug and Mattress. So uh, what's 21 then? 21 is the Apple Don't talk about 21. It's also an end too. It's called the Apple Tree Inn, and it's in it's this little fenced in area. There are some apple trees that are uh, have been planted inside it. It's the probably the nicest looking of the ends. 
in the town, but it has three of them. So, you know, this is a fairly small town here. Uh, to have three pretty good size inns um, says something about it. Obviously, the mug and the mattress is probably the least, um, I don't know. Nice. Ship shape, ship shape of the of the ones that you see with the uh, the apple tree being the nicest of the inns. Um, well, I'm heading for the apple tree one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Milo marches uh marches to his own drummer and he's heading uh he's he's done with boats he's done with swamps uh yep. he's, he's ready to put his uh little har feet up on uh in a fine inn because it's been a while he's been riding far too long so he marches directly there uh not saying anything to anyone as he does so uh just heading off toward the apple tree uh what is everyone else doing so if I see this correctly, it looks like the herbalist is right behind the baker, which is right behind the mug. Uh, seven. 16 and 14. Uh, so, oh, sorry, 16. Yeah, you got to tell me what it is. Six, 16 and 14. Yes, that would be correct. So, uh, 16 as the Imla here baker and uh, 14 is uh, Palindal the herbalist. Yeah, you can see their signs up kind of as you take a look down those main thoroughfares. Obviously, you don't see a brothel here because it's tucked back behind. You can't see the stuff that's back away from the street. But you can see four, which is the Hazardrum Cartwright. So there's a Cartwright here. Five uh, is uh, Grena the Grocer. So there's a grocery here. Uh, 20 is the White Mule Tavern. <laughs> that's looking good for Dromer probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh eight is uh uh malvagor's weaponry shop you can hear uh the clanging of a um you know an anvil probably coming from in there uh and those the, those are the main things that you can see here obviously if there's stuff tucked back you might not see it but uh, you'd have to take a further look yeah well Karen there will head down to the herbalist and see what kind of uh trading and knowledge and herbs he can do with this herbalist because i'm sure i've got stuff he doesn't have and i'm hoping he's got stuff i don't have i don't think uh Enzo would follow she's following karen here mm -hmm. she's following I'm her. going to the bar okay the drummer heads off to the bar milo goes to the inn uh so that leaves our army here kind of lo looks at tal's written and says uh well i got any ideas tal's written? I'm gonna see if I can cheer some spirits with a with a with a song in in the same inn that Milo's going to. I'm gonna follow him, but I want to oh, stop man. by the uh, the because uh, I heard the the blacksmith. I want to stop by and restock my arrowheads before I do that because I'm very I'm very low. Um. So right. go. You know which do you you which which of our drunken companions or soon to be drunken companions <laughs> do you want to follow, Armir? <laughs> Because uh, you know they're going to start some shit. Yeah, our Ar Armier Ar watches Inzel uh, walk up the street. Uh, for Never mind. I know who you want to follow. Yeah. And then finally, says, the armorer. finally says, uh, "I I will go to the armory with you. Uh, my weapons could use uh, obviously some care. They've been well worn and used over the course of the time. So be that the rewrapping of a hilt." You know, the patching of an armor piece, something like that. I mean, you, you guys have good armor, but you still need to maintain it in some fashion. As, so can as go I through. watch him watch uh, Inzil walk away, I throw <laughs> my arm around him. I'm like, I'm glad to see you have your priorities straight again, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> to the armorer. Yes, to the, to the armorer, my friend. <laughs> oui, mon ami, oui. <laughs> mon ami. Uh, you, uh, you head off to into the... Uh, to the armory okay so the, uh, at the armory you can see there's a dwarf there with jet jet black hair oh shit i should have went uh and <laughs> um, he is uh working readily um on uh some armor you can see everything that that he's got in here looks looks pretty good i mean the guy obviously knows what he's doing um and and as you kind of take a look around you can see that he has uh in the, in the rafters, actually, there's a banner uh, that's kind of wafting through there, and it looks like a giant stone foot is on it. Um, and um, so, uh, but he looks up uh, from his work, wipes his brow, 
and uh, takes kind of note uh, of an elf, um, something that you probably he probably hasn't seen a lot of, I guess, at least by the way he looks. And then uh, uh, he says, uh, ah, what can I do for you? Hello, my friend. I'm, I'm in search of arrowheads. We, we've had many an adventure. My friend Armir here has some armor and weaponry that might need a little tuning up. And my dwarven friend back in the, in the bar, I'm sure we'll stop by soon enough. But while I'm here, I'm looking for arrowheads. Dwarf, you say? What clan? <laughs> God, what is my clan? Dallas, it's like I don't, I don't know. You're from the Blue Mountains, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's from the Blue Mountains. I know not his clan name, but he hails from the Blue Mountains. You can see Spitz. I know he pisses <laughs> me off daily. <laughs> that is a long ass way from here. Yeah, it's a long way from here. Truly, we have journeyed far. Hence, my need for arrowheads, as I've spent many slaying the orcs along the way. Aye. Well, I don't mind dealing with you, but I won't deal with any dogs from the Blue Mountains. I'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can see he come, He goes over to uh, a, a bin and he takes a, uh, takes out a basically a tray and you can see he's got a few dozen fine arrowheads there that he's forged at some point in the past. He says, look them over, see what you want. Uh, we can We can haggle out a price. You there, Armir, you said your name was. Let me take a look. You look to have uh, a little worse for wear. Your armor's taking a beating. So uh, he starts looking over his stuff, uh, making suggestions or talking to him. You see, uh, Armir, um, he... Uh, He's actually going to release his um, chain, which is elven in, in make, um, to the smith to have him uh, go over it because it's taken such a beating. Uh, and then he's going to, but he's just asked for um, wraps and stuff like that. He's going to work on his own blade wrapping and he always deals with his own blade. He's not going to su surrender Eglian to him, but the he, they haggle out a price uh, there. And then uh, for... Um, probably roughly uh, i don't know a gold you can probably get a couple dozen arrowheads from him as well right. house right right then he talks a bit uh to each of you as he's as he's going over the business do you do you have any armor or anything you need taking a look at or do you not even wear metal armor uh no i i i don't actually i don't i think i just have leathers yeah just leather um, what else? So you probably don't. Yeah, just leather, and of course, I still have my ridiculous mask on. Actually, I imagine I t I tried to take it off. It does come off, right? No, it does not. You can't. It does not. It. Okay, cool. Then I just rolled. It. <laughs> so yeah, it's cool. We're gonna play it like it's not even there. I just I just if anyone reacts to it, I'll talk about it. But otherwise, I'm just fine with it now. It's me. I'll call you Horace. Yeah. Right. So uh, you talk to them. Uh, further down the street, we'll go into the, uh, you go into the herbalist shop, uh, a little bell chimes ding, as you uh, open that shop and the two of you um, go in um, and uh, you can see that uh, within this shop, this is the herbalist, is that where you're going? Mm -hmm. uh, you can see a, an uh, older man is there. Uh, you can see he's got gray hair uh, and uh, looks up from uh, some kind of um, concoction that he's working on with a pestle. And can you imagine these two walking into a no, shop? It's, it'd be pretty <laughs> His eyes get a little wide, especially seeing the seven foot tall Karen. Theory. There's these gorgeous people walking into the shop. <laughs> well, and Karen, there's like, you always turn counterclockwise on the pestle. Not clockwise. <laughs> uh, starting off strong. <laughs> yes, yes. More travelers. What can I do for you? Uh, his and his name was outside. It's what again? Uh, Palindal. Palindal. 
Oh, my good man, Palandal. My companion and I here are uh, alchemists and herbalists by trade. Um, we have come from uh, far in the uh, in the west, and uh, we uh, we have some uh, some extra herbs. I have some extra herbs from the west that I'd be willing to uh, trade for some of your more local things. Um, I'm sure you have things here that uh, I've not seen or worked with before, um, and I'd be happy to trade with you or or buy some outright. Yes, yes. Well, come in. Let me see your wares. All right. I got a friggin' list. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so you do have an extensive list. Um, and, and there are obviously a lot of stuff that, that you can look over. The question becomes exactly what you're are you looking for from him, both you and Insel, um, versus the stuff that you have. I mean, you have a ton of stuff that you pulled out of the fortress. So you obviously have stuff you can trade as need be, but is there anything that you're specifically looking for? That's the better question here. Yeah. Um, I would like to look for uh, Zulcindura mushroom, mushrooms and Arnumanus. And those, are, um, yeah, and tell me what those so, are. So the, the mushrooms are temporary three rounds of haste. Our new manus is double the normal healing rate. Um, and if he's got any Reglan clothes, I definitely like those. Those are the ones that you just take and get a wound back. back. How about you, Enzo? What are you looking for here? I'm looking for anything that might help me on my, my newfound quest to uh, figure out how to heal people. <laughs> my newfound uh, alchemy passion. Right. So... Um, let's see, uh, we'll go to our, our handy dandy and see how this goes. All right. So the first thing you were looking for, Brent, specifically were the mushrooms, the haste mushrooms, correct? Yeah. Uh, he will have those on a two and ten. Okay. Oh, this, what, my forbidden. <laughs> so what is it? Are you roll it and it disappeared. Oh, why is it not allowed? It's weird. No tens, huh? Huh. Oh well. Okay. I thought we had a pretty cool solve there, but I can just roll out, right? Two and 10. So he gets an eight. So okay. he does not have any of the mushrooms available to you. Uh, how about the uh, double healing rate, Arnumanus? Arnumanus. Ah, a rare thing indeed. Uh, I do have uh, three of those in house. Okay. Um, so let's make it, I'll make a note of that, that he's got three of those. None of the mushrooms. Did he have any Reglan cloves? Those are just the one wound for one, one leaf. No, very hard to come by and sought after quite readily by those who can collect them. As you can well imagine why. Yeah. Um, well, for those three Arnumanus, I'm going to give him an Olvar. Okay. Olvar is the resurrection within two days. All right. Because I'm uh, assuming he's never seen one of those. Yeah, I mean, he's heard about them, but he's never seen one. All so right. I figure that will definitely be more than three Artemanas. Sure. Yes, he'll readily accept that. And you're specifically talking to him, um, Enzo, concerning healing, correct? And your, For the most your, part. Yeah. your new quest. Uh, so why don't you um, uh, go ahead and roll an influence check for me? We'll just do a normal one, not opposed. <laughs> Those are big eyes. <laughs> well, that was an eight. So well, your influence Wait. is high though. I don't know if it's yeah, I don't well, know if it's it might not be a, it's a secondary. It's not secondary. a primary. Uh, Seven is as yeah. high as you can get. Yeah. Um, you're able to talk to him uh about um healing and stuff like that um but he seems quite um 
secretive about anything that he might know. He's more uh, interested in talking with the elf. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, make an awareness check for me. <laughs> it's not your well, day. That that was an eight, so I do make it. Okay. But it was just another eight. So it's right. annoying. So you must have awareness as a prime, I guess. Yes. Yes, so. I do. Yeah. All right. So, uh, but you notice when you're having a back and forth with him, and even though you're not getting necessarily anywhere with him specifically on just asking him things about it, he does seem to to give you an indication of kind of a, a quid pro quo. If you give me something that has to do with healing, maybe I would give you something that has to do with healing. Okay. Let me find uh, what's in my inventory. So now I've got those some paste. I just don't know how much I have. Well, you've got the paste, but you've got the recipe for the paste. That's true. I that's do. And so it's, it's probably not talking about just handing over some healing stuff. He's that's he's, fair. Well, I would at least like to show him what it like what it is. You know, mm -hmm. give him an example. Look, it is a thing that works. So I'm not just bullshitting you. Uh, okay. I've heard of yeah, this. Yeah, I'll 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 kind of show him. A heavily guarded uh, secret out of the swamps to the south, um, not something that comes across the trade road. I'd be willing to uh, uh, show you uh, one of my more um, readily available recipes for something such as this. Sure. It's a fair trade, I think. All right. Uh, he provides you um, with another recipe that requires a couple more common items that you find out on the plains here. Um, that could be sought after to do basically the same thing as as the swamp does, um, creating a, uh, a in this particular standpoint, it's a, it actually brews up into a tea, and the tea can be put into a flask and then drunk, or poured into somebody's mouth if need be, and uh, provide some healing there as well. And in return, I show him how to make the paste. All right. So you two trade off that knowledge, that taking most of your uh, time. Uh, you you did your trades kind of early. You can stay with her and watch what they're doing, um, Karen Thier, uh, instead of leaving her just down here uh, while, while mm -hmm. they go over stuff and, and talk through things. But uh, that can take you basically through uh, your interactions then uh, with the herbalist, both of you coming away with something I think of value to you. Um, um, I did want to ask him before we leave um, if he knows anything about, uh, I saw a sign coming in that said there was a seer here. The astrologer? Yeah, the astrologer. Uh, yes. Um, there uh, is an astrologer uh, in town. Um, Tyrgill is uh, his name. Uh, I don't buy into what he's selling, but uh, he does make portents, most particularly concerning uh, weather patterns is what he's really mostly involved in. And he sells okay. that knowledge to the caravans that come through to know what they might be seeing uh, in any direction that they're going. Gotcha. That's kind of what I was hoping to hear. So, right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. He's a seer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Damn quack. Uh, now my cousin, that's a seer. <laughs> so, uh, Otherwise, Dromer, you've gone to the uh, to the White Mule Tavern. Is this correct? Yep. Um, and uh, there, um, you are greeted by uh, what you would assume a standard uh, kind of uh, human tavern to be. Uh, your your boots uh, stick to the floor a little bit. Um, and uh, uh, there, there is a bar uh, with a, a barman there and probably uh, half a dozen people here. You can see that the, the people that are within this area um, have the same kind of Easterling and Dunlin look for the most part, but there are others um, that look a little bit more foreign as if they're just visiting or they've come here for some particular reason or they're passing through. The styles here go to furs and silks, tassels, braids. Uh, most of the men having long mustaches and fur-lined horned helms. Um, you do see uh, among those here that do have weaponry, they, they go toward uh, short recurve bows, scimitars or javelins. Um, and they are drinking and talking, uh, you know, within the area and uh, they don't seem to have any kind of issue with you coming in or don't seem like they've never seen a dwarf before. So uh, Good. I invite you obviously to have a drink if you're, if you're head to the bar and 
see if I can't get a meal on a, a strong ale. All right. Yeah, certainly you you can order that up. Um, do you do you have as a skill influence? I do not have influence. Okay, then why don't you make an awareness? Awareness? Yes. Okay. Uh, you're going to make an opposed awareness now. This oh, is opposed? A, okay. Yes. Okay. And this is a new rule that I've just uh, in, implanted in the Companion Volume 2 after our play. Um, we were doing, when you were doing opposed, you were doing um, your skill, uh, the TS, plus your level up to that TS, and then plus a D10. That would be your standard opposed. Um, now I've just put into an emplacement, instead of doing your level, you add a level bonus. Um, so depending on your level, you get a bonus to okay. that. What is your level? Is it 11. above eight? Yeah, it's 11. So, uh, at 11, I'm pretty sure you're at plus three. So you would be so your skill. Nine plus, nine plus three. Yeah, there you go. 12 plus a D10. Okay. So that's a seven. 19. So nine, 19. All right. Um, just as you are drinking, eating, and hearing particular things in there, you come across two uh, intriguing kind of storylines of people talking that you pick up uh, while you're in there. Not you're not engaged in a conversation with them. You're just eating and doing your own business. But it's things you hear while you're while you're eating. Uh, the first one is that an Easterling army is massing on the for, far shores of Rune, and is supposed to breach the borders of Dorwinian by late summer. That's what somebody's talking about. Sorry. Eastern uh, army on rune. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other one is somebody talking about bandits that are supposedly aligned with Mordor that have been claiming caravans along the trade routes in the city uh, of this town for nearly two years, but they never hit enough of the caravans to warrant anyone sending anything from any kind of neighboring kingdoms or principalities or, uh, you know, uh, steadfast or anything like that to come and get them. So they're very targeted in what they're doing. They're not just burning the whole thing down, basically, uh, is what the person is talking about. This person is talking to it, is talking to somebody probably from a caravan. Um, and the person is nodding away. <laughs> yes, yes, okay, good to know, good to know. So those are two things that you pick up while they're obviously not engaging in a conversation because you're a dwarf. And, and I think they're from you. Morgoth? From Mordor. Mordor. Uh, so uh, those are the two things that you pick up there as you drink and eat and enjoy yourself uh, quite readily here. Um, and otherwise, uh, we can take my, Milo, heading by his lonesome, up to the uh, the Apple Tree Tavern. You still there, Milo? Yep. I want an inn room. I want a bath. <laughs> and then I want, I want a your place near the fire. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they'll they'll want my kind here as soon as I flash some gold. <laughs> you walk in and you can see the uh um the bar the 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 innkeeper uh who is behind a large um basically vestibule uh at the entry uh, doesn't even see you when you come in and finally yeah. <laughs> looks up over the thing because he sees the door open but he doesn't see anybody come in. He's like and then his eyes get kind of big as saucers. One of the wee folk. <laughs> Indeed, my good sir. I require a room, a bath, and then some place close to the fire that I might enjoy perhaps some something to eat and drink from your fine establishment. Yes, yes, of course. I had uh, I have heard many a story of your your folk in, uh, in the West, or. Yeah, in the West, but I've never, uh, I never thought it to be true. <laughs> Such exaggerations come up and down this road. But yes, yes, sir, let me set you up. And before we, be, but before we go to it, sir, may I uh, inquire as to your level of encumbrance? Average. How heavy is <laughs> your sack? <laughs> Not the oh, biggest little half and sack you ever seen. Uh, just what do you mean by that, good sir? I was uh, just making sure that you could afford the fine. Oh, fine of course, of course. How much is it? I will pay ahead of time. 
Oh, well, uh, a room, a bath, and a meal. Uh, that will be five gold, my good sir. Indeed. I'll, I'll throw five up on the... Ah, oh, he readily uh, scoops it up. Uh, yes, yes, well, follow me, follow me. There should be somebody beside him, like in Ghostbusters, going... <laughs> yeah, <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be four big ones. Yeah, that's going to be four gold. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and you get uh, well, whisked away to be uh, kind of pampered and taken Bert. care of. You can see he summons a a, a woman, um, uh, some kind of house frau to come in and uh, make sure a, a bed is set for you and uh, a meal is brought to you down by the fire after they've drawn a, a fine bath. And that will, of course, take most of your evening because I assume you'll enjoy the bath and not, oh, yes. be, not be quick about it. Nope. Um. So uh, you are set up there, um, and that means Tal the, probably the next person that would be done with anything would be Talisrit and Aramir. Um, you can leave the smithy, the weapon shop, uh, and then you said you're heading toward the inn as well? I Yeah, I figured I'd follow to the nicer inn, the same one that Milo went to, and see if I could sing a song of our adventures the names will be changed to protect the innocent, but, <laughs> you know, of, of Nazgul being brought low and towers full of orcs torn asunder. You, uh, remember you're in the East. You might not be <laughs> singing up the praises of destroying orcs or something. Or All right. Remember that I do not have the deep depth of knowledge of right. LOTR that you guys do. So. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, you you do cross the square, um, and, and as you do so, um, you can see that there is someone by the um, the well, and you can see that they're uh, garbed in mostly rags, and they have a, a cup that sits before them as they lean against the well. Damn, I was hoping for a bar. Alms, alms for Oedipus. <laughs> How is there is there anyone else it, like any other indication in this town? Because like everything, mostly what we see is this pretty like a pretty nice yeah for the most part yeah. yeah. So does this person stand out, or does this seem like your sort of typical pauper beggar in in a in any town that you would see? Uh, probably fairly similar to anybody uh, anybody you'd see in a larger city, but maybe a little nicer in what what they're wearing. Um, so they're but, a fancy beggar. Yeah. For them, I, I, they have a, they have a cowl them, up and they. I pay them no mind, and I, I mean, I don't know if Armir has a different reaction, but I'm, I, I want to get back to sort of keep our crew semi reunited. All we right, can't, we can't seem to turn over a rock without getting into some real trouble, so <laughs> Armier, I don't want to be separated for too long. Armir, not go looking for any. Right. Armir yeah. does walk over and drops a couple of uh, coins, uh, silvers into the into the cup, and uh, you can hear the man say, uh, "You know, th thank you, Lord, thank you." And then he just walks away, uh, moving over toward um, the inn. Uh, and you get you get there, and you can see a very pleased looking um, innkeep is smiling to himself as he's sitting there, sitting uh, by he's his making uh, more money tonight than he's made in a while. <laughs> You can probably made a month's worth of the doors open up and here, uh. <laughs> when it rains, it's our force. He sees the odd uh, mask and uh, tries not to pay too much attention to it, but does look at the bedraggled ranger next to him. Not, not as uh, yes. Is there something I can help you to, gentlemen? With I like how he stressed the gentleman. Right. Uh, I'm looking for. My name is Talzrit the Bard. I'm sure, you've heard of me. <laughs> well, then the mask makes total sense. <laughs> right. It's all part of the persona, the act. Uh -huh. Joie de vivre, as my friend Armour <laughs> might say. <laughs> I'm looking for a goblet full of wine and a stage. Ah. Uh. I see a minstrel. Well, you might yeah, uh, if you want to use an ugly term, but all right. <laughs> you might find uh, more purpose at the muggin, m the the muggin mattress, my dear. Sir. Does no one here like <laughs> song? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
this establishment has no stage for uh, disturbing our other patrons. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just sit here quietly. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do wish a mug of wine, uh, that is something that we can, you can be found in the bar. All right. I quietly go over the bar. <laughs> Uh, you can see uh, Armir hangs back. Um, and you have a straw. <laughs> <laughs> make it a make an awareness check, uh, Talzrit. One of those curly Q ones. <laughs> Two. Uh, all right, you can overhear Armir um, asking about um, the uh, if they have some kind of uh, a Lord's suite or something like that. Um, and the, the, the man, the, the, the innkeeper seems taken aback from it, like, well, yes, but not for you kind of thing until he, until he slaps up some, some gold and then the eye, then his smile comes back. Oh yes, yes. Well, indeed, uh, we can, we can provide something like that, uh, for you. Best we ever. Of course I have a room for you. <laughs> just purchased by a halfling, not five minutes ago. <laughs> well, the Affleck didn't ask for a suite. He just asked for a room, a bath, and a and a yep. And put somewhere to put his feet up, I think, and a meal. That's what he wanted—a fine meal. And then you can hear uh, Armir asking if uh, a woman and an elf have come in, and the guy says, "No, no, I would have certainly recognized that." Says, uh, "Fine, fine," and then then moves off towards the bar uh, with you. And you can both order up a drink there at the bar. Uh, but you do not see Milo here. He's probably basking in his bath still. But you do ah. you do get the smell of good food being cooked somewhere uh, behind the bar area within the tavern. So, And finally, as you guys drink there, and may probably order a, a meal as well. Um, Enzil and Karen Thier, you can exit the herbalist. And go where you like from there. Um, I will offer Enzel my uh, my elbow and say, should we join the dwarf at the tavern or should we join uh, Milo at the apple tree end? Just to be a jerk. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to go to the tavern. <laughs> All right. Lady's choice. We'll go to the tavern. Tavern. All right. Uh, you move up the, the street. Here. You move up the street here, uh, moving past the astrologer, which you see there as well. You go by the blacksmith shop, where there's obviously still work going on. Uh, moving toward the tavern, um, yeah, you do see the grocer, and as you come uh, as you come around to where the tavern is, you can see that there's another sign uh, behind the tavern as well, um, and uh, it is uh, for a clothier, which is. Uh, behind just behind the tavern just so you know ah. um, and so we'll probably want to check that out considering her stuff is trashed it's just yeah. absolutely trash. absolutely <laughs> trash do you want to check that out now or do you want to go into the tavern well uh, I, I mean it depends it, on what time of day it is yeah is it evening would they be closed no it's still still the middle of the day I mean, it's probably like three o'clock in the oh, afternoon okay. Hmm. okay uh drink first all right uh, then. Yeah, you head into the tavern. You can see at the um at the bar is the dwarf. You can see he has uh two empty plates, metal plates in front of <laughs> him, thick bones and stuff still on it. Uh and Probably six six cups. Six six tankers <laughs> uh, around him. And he seems quite cheery with himself as he has a nice froth in his beard. Uh still sitting there. Oh, he sees you too. Doing a lot of giggling to himself. <laughs> Anything good here? Oh, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and so we see the same thing that you described. Um, yes. yes. Is there any chance? Um, I'm going to go up to the bartender and ask if they have any uh, elven wine. Uh, uh, you can see he says uh, Dorwinian wine. We do. All right. I'll, I'll take a glass of your best Dorwinian wine. Hey. Hey, Armour said that was pretty good stuff. So. 
<laughs> Our finest Darwinian wine, huh? What we'll do, that'll be 10 gold. He sees what you do with that. I had him 10 gold. <laughs> <laughs> you can see uh, everyone that's at the bar can make an awareness. Oh, <laughs> lots of eyes on you lots now. Lots of eyes on that, slapping down 10 gold like it's nothing. I am paying attention to something else completely. <laughs> so, am, so am I. Oh, my God. <laughs> People nodding to each other. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 these are... We we may just have to follow him out after he's had a few. <laughs> yeah, Dromer got a six. All right, he puts up a bottle and uh, a glass for you after he, after he slides that off the the bar, uh, and he says, uh, and you can see uh, the the oblivious uh, Inzel is <laughs> she she's checking out what was on what my, she's trying to discern what was on uh, Dromer's plate that she might order. <laughs> 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 She's really going through it. Like, what's this? What's this? What would that be? Um, and, but uh, had a couple of pigeons. And... Uh, obviously, you can see. <laughs> I mean, you know, we we know that of her comeliness. So uh, there, she's obviously being taken a notice of here as well by many of the people in the bar, uh, because she did not come into town cloaked or masked or anything that I'm aware of. So nope. Uh, anyway, Dromer, you can see that there is a bit of a hubbub. Nothing that looks like anything's going to happen at this particular no trouble. But people have obviously taken a notice of you all as you in there. Um, you can try the uh, uh, Darwinian wine. Uh, you would say that over the course of the time that that you've had wine, uh, you've had better, uh, mm -hmm. but it is not vastly better than what this little bar in the middle of nowhere just provided you which is odd to you, you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so well i mean it is a, a major trade route so they should have access to some good stuff here and there right and i also know that he's not like trying to pawn off cheap shit on me like i think oh, no, like it, i don't know what it, i'm it's doing quite tasty for sure yeah it's it's a fine wine uh and again, as as fine as you've known, with with only a few exceptions in your several millennia worth of imbuing yourself with wine. Can I see anything on the label? Is there a label on the bottle? I assume. Um, you do see a gray uh, stallion is on the label. Um, that is kind I'll of. I'll ask him about the the right. label and the make. Um. He says uh, that is one of the prime uh, vintiers uh, of Darwinian. Um, the House of Grey is what it's called. Um, and they make some of the finest vintage vintages of wine that come out of South Darwinian. I cannot argue with that. This is a very fine wine. And where is, because uh, we're on the edge of Darwinian, right? Uh, not really. You're you're fairly. You're still fairly far south of Rune, so mm. it, it's still a ways. Did you uh happen upon this uh this expensive vintage from uh, trade coming through here? Yes, I did. I mean, trade draw, uh, goes through at all times, and this particular when I have an opportunity to. Uh, afford such a uh a vintage i will pick them up but as you know or may not know <laughs> it's fairly expensive oh yes definitely just told within my stocks very few here would ask for such a thing <laughs> although it does happen on occasion and for you I miss is there something i can get you get me your, your just your cheapest made I just want to try it. <laughs> the garbage water. <laughs> something, something Dog trashy. Water. You All right. this with... uh, uh, sink down in their basement. basement. <laughs> he, he serves up for a couple silver, a uh, tankard of their, you know, low life. The swill. Their house mead. Right. Perfect. Intel hates it. <laughs> Gets there the you. bouncer to piss in a mug. <laughs> she's she's going through something right now. She's just like, trying through things. I don't deserve better. 
drama <laughs> to look up the barkeep. Better get her a plate of food. She's sticking bones too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, he can also uh, get some food for you as well if you'd want something to to nibble on there as well. A little bit. Uh, yeah. The tab that he'll put the tab on yours, Dromer. You probably spend over the course of the time there. You're probably going to spend three gold just in general. You can give him, give him four with four for a tip, right? And uh, Karen, theory, you have the wine. Um, you, uh, I, I don't guess you're talking to anyone in here. Um, if you want to, you can make the same kind of awareness rolls. Um, opposed just to just to hear what they're thing. talking about. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Enzel is a fantastic influencer. If she wants to get some information, <laughs> but if you're just listening out here, that's a different thing. Yeah, well, I'll just do a regular influence, um, paying particular attention to what everyone is saying about Enzel now. Well, yeah, that's still awareness. Influence is... Or, sorry, sorry, awareness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, four. Oh, you're just... Uh, so that is... Uh, well... It'd be a yeah, so that, That's just... You hear some some whispers and some talks concerning, you know, uh, you know, a, a woman of noble quality. Wonder where she's from. Mm -hmm. Uh what's with the paint around her eyes little you know i like it i don't you know, <laughs> you know everybody's got an opinion right uh, <laughs> you're crazy you're crazy dude oh yeah uh what's with that sword i don't want to find out that kind of stuff anyway um so is that blood all over the, the hem of her dress maybe <laughs> yes, yeah. uh so uh, they go through uh, uh, various things. No, nobody having any conversations that you would consider threatening in any way. Just people talking. Yeah. Uh, Ansel, you can uh, listen as well uh, if you want to. If you want to make an awareness, um, you can do that. Um, or if you're, I if you're think she'll probably either chat up the barkeep or probably the barkeep. They hear things just about the goings on in the area. Okay, then you can make an you can make an influence check. What level are you? Okay. Are you eleventh as well? Yeah. yeah. So your plot that's plus, plus three. Plus three. I'm gonna look it up because I didn't know if anybody was eleventh. Let me look it up in my doc. So I, I we I, almost all are. Yeah, I'm eleven. I mean, yeah, we're all eleven. That's really high. Um, Fast Compendium, Volume Two. I can't wait to get this out. I can't wait to see it. Um, yeah, right. Okay, for 11th, it is plus three. Yeah. Okay. 11th to 14th is a plus three modifier. So you get your so, skill, your TS, whatever your TS okay. is, plus three, plus a D10. Plus if whatever she's got on, like her beauty and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I don't. She she's gonna have to calculate that on her sheet. Like I don't know what. Yeah, you know, it's, that, uh, TS. That, that adds to your TS. So it's whatever that TS is overall. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I got a nineteen. A nineteen. Yeah. You missed it by one. But, oh. <laughs> but you do uh, pick up some other interesting information from the barkeep as you talk him up. Uh, while you nurse your uh, terrible mead, uh, <laughs> trying to cut it with whatever good food uh, is brought before you. Uh, one is uh, that he tells you that uh, to the east is the Easterling city state of Ixpa. It lies along the road east, obviously, nearly three weeks away, however. And what one must pass through something called the Salt Desert to get to it, a natural barrier that separates um, the so south reaches of Rune and um, uh, Daggerlad uh, from this from its southeastern neighbor. Um, he also tells you uh, after uh, kind of to the side um, as he side side eyes uh, Karen Thier, that there are elves that are supposed to live uh, within the salt desert called the Kinlai. Um, and they coax water from unknown sources, and they are said to they are said to dwell beneath the burning sands there. 
interesting. Wow. Very cool. Did you catch that from your notes last time? From what last time? The last time we played, there was uh, something that might have uh, corresponded over that I know you wrote down, Brent, but I don't know if you've got, I don't know how comprehensive your notes are. You are a professor, so they're probably terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, those are the more Quandi. Because <laughs> I, I was wondering if they were going to be the dark elves that I've heard about. Yeah, yeah that may not they're be living a good below thing the sand. to do. So anyway, yeah, that's one of the seven. Are there seven tribes of uh, uh, seven seven lost tribes of the you know? the dark elves yeah what... and i and i'm sure i've never run into one of them <laughs> if you did it was before they were dark elves like yeah yeah you would have left long before when they were going no we ain't going you're like see you guys uh-huh yeah, yeah. three thousand years ago or three thousand years ago yeah so anyway um those are two pieces that you do coax out of um the barkeep as you talk to him and oh. Uh, a few hours pass, probably six six o'clock. Um, it is uh, summer, so it'll be um, uh, light for some time. Uh, but yeah, I want to make sure that Enzo pops out before she thinks that you know that Taylor is going to go home for the day or whatever. I'll stretch my legs and walk out. I think someone said something about a blacksmith in town i think i'll go check that out it's right, it's right <laughs> next door yeah <laughs> all right that'll be interesting they're they're leaving uh are you leaving as well karen dear now that you've had yeah. your... get outside i'll tell karen to the stuff i heard about the uh the eastern Mordorian bandits and the mordor yeah bandits and the eastern army army going to ruin yeah definitely two things we ought to Keep an eye on. Good ear, Master Dwarf. It's always good to go to the bar. All right. You, uh, um, Enzel, you'll move down to the clothier uh, and uh, you can walk inside. Just as you're getting ready to walk inside, you can see a woman, uh, tall, kind of willowy, um, attractive, but you would say um, advancing a little bit in age. Um not old by any means, but showing a little bit of times wear on her, uh, is moving towards the door, looking like she was probably just getting ready to close. Yeah, just I'll ask lucky. if she's willing to make some money. <laughs> she looks you over. Uh, what can I do for you, lady? I am well, Errol. Uh, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Insel. I'm a traveler, as you can see. Um, Help. <laughs> uh she takes a look at it and uh she says i have seen a lot of things in disrepair but nothing like this <laughs> i i don't even want to ask necessarily what has happened to this fine uh elven i do believe uh yes, yes. Down. a lot uh, has happened to us let's put it that way <laughs> Uh, if you if, would it, if it's a if it's a loss, it's a loss. But I do need to replace it either way. Uh, if you wish to leave it with me, I can see if I can do some repair on it. Um, I have had uh, experience uh, working with elven clothing, um, so it is something that I might be able to do. I can't give any promises, <laughs> as you said. That's this fair. is some wear, but yes. Uh, if you have something else to change into, um, you may, or if you'd like to look at anything I have in the shop, uh, there are only a few things that I've made, but uh, obviously I don't have a lot of need for it, uh, having pre-made things, mostly fabrics and things here that I could make for you, but if you'd like to take a look, it's completely up to you. Uh, I'll take a look at what you've got. Because I have the tatters of a very nice dress. <laughs> <laughs> but they are also tatters, if you want to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> which, which dress do you have that's tattered you've got it's it's that um that like noble ladies dress the 
gown of gold and pearls. Oh, yeah. That gonna... was absolutely tattered when I was stabbed in the back and poisoned when we tried to go up that tower. <laughs> definitely yeah, the, definitely got cut marks and blood and right that's the one so you've got two of them that she could actually take a look at yeah yeah, yeah. um you do find a um a fine yet humble uh dress a very um soft fabric um that would be very nice to wear um just okay. around. yeah i think i think at this point it's just something to wear while her other stuff is being repaired i mean karen there has like what four dresses <laughs> his bag. Mm -hmm. oh, those, those are dresses those so, are those are, those are his dresses ones, i think is what yeah, i just can't remember the i just can't remember their names right uh but um yeah but it, and it would cost you a gold if you would like to have uh that dress and then she could work on the other two at, at your leisure yeah. yeah okay sounds good give those to her for for the day, for the evening. Okay. And she says, I will uh, do work on them, but I'll probably have to work on them through tomorrow as well because of the... I'm going to assume that's probably fine. We need Nobody has made any sense that we're leaving on the morrow in the morning anyways. So. No, no. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and you are... Um, so after that, uh, then we have uh, the dwarf, uh, Dromer, uh, going to the weapon shop. <laughs> Walk inside. Uh, you can see um, Aramir's armor is actually on a, for no sense of the word, a mannequin, basically, as to holding it up. And a dwarf has uh, got kind of an eye spectacle thing that he's working on with it and he's trying to work on some of the links of it you can hear him grumbling about elven craftsmanship and stupidity and stuff like that as he's trying to work <laughs> with these intricate links that the dumbass elves had to create just make a God, ring of iron <laughs> Goddamn elves aren't worth a shit are they <laughs> Uh, he looks up from what he's doing to see you, and then you can see his uh, beneath his coal black black beard. You can see he frowns. I was warned, one of the blue doors had, <laughs> was in town, but I didn't think you'd have the gumption to show up at, at my at my shop. <laughs> it's like, what? What I do? Was it matter where I'm from? <laughs> if I got gold to spend. I got gold to spend. <laughs> Your gold don't spend here. Ah, well, well, okay. You can take uh, make an awareness check, Joe. All right, and we dropped him. That's a six. So yeah. Uh, you see up in the the loft as well there, you can see the banner um, that does sh uh, show the stone foot. Um, and you can, uh, I'll let you make a uh, mental save. We'll see what a, I've got a six mental save. All right, I'll roll it. One. Ooh. You do know that, uh, you do note that um, there are four dwarven clans of the east that do not readily associate with the three Dwarven clans of the, of the West. Uh, one of them uh, would be the Stone Feet. Well, do you have a Ford you don't use in? <laughs> no, but you might try the Saddler. I could probably do better work than you anyway. All right, thanks. <laughs> He's doing the, leaving Caranther there. Like, I'm just going to show myself out with my buddy. <laughs> I'm out. Caranther's like, I have no gate key. I have no gate key. <laughs> All right, so you can follow Hope him. Hope you have a bad day. <laughs> You can follow him out um, and uh, uh, go into the street there as well. You can see the same uh, uh, squatter that is at the, the well is, uh, is still there as uh, evening shadows are laying heavy on the uh, 
I think Drauber's actually going to sit down next to the squatter. Okay. Just chat him up. <laughs> so what goes on in this town? <laughs> Looks like a pretty, pretty heavily traveled area. Lots of people moving in, moving out. Anything I need to be worried about? He's a spy from Mordor. <laughs> I don't know. Is there something you need to worry about? Uh, make an awareness check for me, Joe. I'll grab some hard tack out of my bag and kind of see if he wants it as I chomp on a piece. That's a three awareness. So. Um, you're talking to him. You give him the hard tack. He takes a bite of it. Um, and you're kind of having a back and forth that isn't really necessarily going much uh, up much of anywhere but um obviously as a as a vagabond or whatever he has a, a smell to him um but as you sit with him a moment um you recognize that smell as something that you have smelled before um very recently the swamp you wouldn't say the swamp. Hmm. You can't necessarily place it. I could. You can make a mental save if you want to. I can try you it. Can, you can try. It's a six. Seven. So no, you so can't no. put your finger on it, but you do. It is a scent that you're, God, where did I smell that? Before? But you can't get anything of it. Again, you don't get a lot of back and forth between him, but he does thank you for the, the tack. I'll throw a couple pieces of silver in there in his cup. All right. By the time you're done talking to him, you can see Enzo uh, comes out across the square as well in, in a new uh, dress. Uh, Karen Thier, what are you doing during the course of this? Were you going to the apple tree? Why? Yeah, it's, it seems like that's where everybody's headed because we're right. done with the tavern. We're done with the clothier. We're done with the armorer. Right. Or were you heading to the brothel? I wasn't sure which way. <laughs> <laughs> He's, Ralph, he's... I'll know by saying anything about that. <laughs> Not Karen Thier's bag. <laughs> he's gone centuries. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't interest him at all. Uh, yes, so... yes, another beautiful woman. Yeah. <laughs> Move along. Uh, My so... eyes have never seen the beauty like yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you pick up... Um... Uh, Enzola, she's moving across the square, and uh, all of you finally uh, kind of meet up at the um, the apple tree. By the time you get to the apple tree, um, Milo, you're done with your bath. You've come out, and you're filling yourself up on three huge plates of food that they brought out to you. Uh, nice. Um, and I'm a uh, happy both, hobbit. <laughs> both uh, Talisrit and uh, Armir are eating from a plate as well. Um, as they wait there. Um, but, uh, and then the, the rest of you, uh, or yeah, the rest of you walk in. Well, actually, Karen Thier comes in first. Um, you are, you're greeted by the same guy. He seems to be more amiable at this point. Ah, your lordship, <laughs> are, you, are you, are you looking for a room? No, at this gold, point, only six at, gold. <laughs> at this point, I'm filling in his his 401k. At this point, <laughs> yes, my good man. I believe a uh, a halfling has come this way. Oh yes, uh, true enough. He has bought one of our uh, one of our rooms for the evening. Uh, oh, I, I will see, also. I, I see he's already got my room then. <laughs> I will also take the same kind of room that uh, the master halfling has. Um, and I would be uh, liking a meal. Yes, yes. Well, head to the bar and I will have a, a room made up for you. Only six gold for the room, my dear sir. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no country bumpkin. <laughs> this this had better be the greatest room I've ever seen for six gold. <laughs> Can I make a... Uh, uh, what would I make? <laughs> what are you trying to do? What You're trying to do an awareness versus... Yeah, First, well, would it? Yeah, would it be a win? This is or? an influence. Yours is an aware. It's opposed. So okay. Yeah. So opposed is level. Plus, or is three. that the thing we're switching? Yeah, it's, it's, your, it's your 
It's your okay. skill TS plus three for your, that's your modifier. So this plus 12. Okay. Oh, one. <laughs> 13. And uh, what is a medium? Uh, he starts at a 12 too, so. Uh, six, so eighteen. Yeah, so <laughs> you're 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 somewhere yeah. else. You think that's uh, yeah? You're just laying out the gold tonight. Not, yeah, not sure, a... whatever. Here you go. All right, here you go. Six gold. And, and, and may I ask, was there a was there a young woman with you who is not here yet? One of our guests had inquired. That's the only reason I asked. Thank you. Thank. Thank Karen. There, yeah. waiting on her. No, he Enzo was. Just he like went in, slips. Oh. Enzo just like slips on by. <laughs> Doesn't even oh. bother. <laughs> I thought Karen Theory had come beforehand and because Drummer had waited and talked to the guy and then Enzel had come out and then they went in together. So I thought Karen Thur was by himself. He, he probably walked. is. Okay. So we'll just say that. Um, who Who's inquiring about a female in our party? Well, one of the gentlemen at the bar, uh, an Aramir, I believe is his name. Oh, Aramir's already here. Well met. <laughs> I'll walk into the bar. <laughs> doesn't say it. Doesn't tell him anything. Just like, uh, uh, <laughs> clink, clink, clink. He checks his money. <laughs> At least he got he the just, gold. That's all he, got, he cares about. We just bought him a summer house. All right. You uh, eventually then, um, yeah, Aramir see, uh, sees you and, and moves up toward the door just as, Finally, the dwarf and Enzil come in. He he looks at this the the the, the keep looks at the the dwarf. Hmm. No, you're no elf. <laughs> there is a lady with you. <laughs> you shaking your head about? What can I do for you? Are you looking for a room this evening? Only seven gold. <laughs> <laughs> no. climbing in price. No, I'm, I'm looking my, for my little friend. <laughs> yes, yes, the Master Hobbit has already acquired a room for this evening. But as you can see here at the Apple Tree, we have many fine rooms. Where Would is like it? Reserved for you? Oh, he's in the bar, sir. But Bar. Sounds good to me. That's where <laughs> I go. It's just, yep. Walk out right on by. <laughs> Hmm. All right, you two walk in. You you see Milo eating from three plates. So I assume you walk up to him. Uh, Apple pie, hot cider <laughs> next to him. I'll plop down to Milo. So, so where's our room at tonight? I move my food away <laughs> from him slightly. With <laughs> oh, I've, I've already had three food plates. Off me. <laughs> and uh, Armir uh, intercepts Enzel uh, when she uh, is coming into the bar, and. Uh, <laughs> looks at looks at your new dress. Very nice. Oh, thank you. Uh, my others needed repair. <laughs> yes, as did my armor. Why don't you ask him? I'll point over at Aaron. <laughs> I'm sure he's got it. Your room. <laughs> normally we normally we split the cost. So what we spend? <laughs> uh. Well, you know, it was it was expensive. It was five whole gold for the room. Well, here's two. <laughs> Fair, figure you got up gold here and food. Uh, the uh, Armir says um, he leans in towards uh, Enzil and says, "I am uncertain of the traditions of Umbar, Lady Enzil, uh, but I would very much like you to uh, share a room with me tonight." Ah. <laughs> oh. Dog. Well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> sure. I would. I would like how you say thank you, thank you. <laughs> Do the hokey pokey. You can much to hokey much to Talisrich chagrin. Oh man, <laughs> Talisrich is still over there. Talisrich wanted to sleep with him. His mask. <laughs> <laughs> Can't play his up. fiddle. <laughs> Yeah, he's just sitting on a stool. Nobody to sing for. What if there's some sing for? It's cool. I wonder if there's some sort of release word you got to say to take that mask off. He wouldn't know it if there is. Yep. It's um, written on the inside of the mask, right? Yeah, <laughs> just popped that right on there. Probably cursed. <laughs> well, if it doesn't come off, it's definitely cursed. It's definitely cursed. <laughs> uh, the um, so. Uh, 
that will uh so the dwarf and the hobbit are uh having a room together this evening Enzel and aramir are having a room together this evening does that mean that the elves are sharing a room as well or did talisrit want to get his own uh i don't know talisrit might stagger out into the street <laughs> he's not impressed by this whole scene Singers all outside. Sounds dicks. They don't like music. They overcharge for everything. Is he going to the mug and mattress where evidently they like uh, good music? Yeah, but, he might. He might. I think he's just going to wander out into the uh, into the town center and see what's going on. He's and not. He he's was not never seen it. again. All right. Yeah. Never <laughs> split the party. And not, isn't that the old axiom? Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I see everyone else is heading out. Especially a singleton. I guess I leave the bar. See you later. All right. I don't know what time is it. It's got to be like night, right? At this point, it's starting to get dark. Yeah, it's about Probably eight, eight or nine. So it's it's it is now getting dark. Yeah, the sun is yeah. set and it's the it is starting to get dark. It's it's too loud. So he and and sort of frustrating, but there's no outlet for him to for his thing. So he's and he drank too much wine without paying attention so now he's sort of out there just like well, he is up. an elf so he well i guess the the sylvan elves can get drunk they enjoy getting getting smashed yeah so he's he's sort of just feeling like on we <laughs> to writing, put it in. writing sad songs in his head on his broken harp all right uh you stumble out oh, to yeah. wander through the town you do see however you do see the brothel when you're wandering out <laughs> Uh, speaking of your ennui, um, and as that, uh, oh, you said ennui. I thought you said STD. <laughs> <laughs> On wiener. Uh, and as you are moving past it, you can see that there is a a languid uh, woman in a silk uh, robe. You can see she has the definite look of an Easterling and she is smoking an extremely long pipe um, with a uh, very funny smelling smoke that rolls out of it as she watches you. You can see her hair is braided and jade with uh, uh, green silk ties. I smell I like wander, pine cards. Wander over in her direction, drawn more by the, by the pipe than the... Uh woman and you know, so it's a it's an interesting smell you the think? pipe not you not the problem <laughs> <laughs> but um you would you care to share anything you can see that i have can be shared for the right price no mm. money he does have he does have money, but th this is you know that reminds him that this is not this is not the scene that he's looking for. So <laughs> it's it's fine. I'm I'm gonna stay with my own thoughts. I'm I'm feeling dark and broody tonight. You want no part of this. I wouldn't be very good company. <laughs> and as he you know as he sort of like you know thinks and he and remembers too that he's got this mask adhered to his face and he probably looks creepy as fuck. So he's just like. <laughs> I'm not good company for anyone. And he, and he heads, heads off. All right. Uh, I'm, you, just mill, I'm milling about. It's like, he's, he's just wandering, wandering the town and like going, kind town. of like checking out like, Oh, like there's a building and everyone's asleep and there's another building and everyone's asleep. He's just walking around being fucking mopey. So like, unless he stumbles upon something, I mean, you can roll a dice to see if I pass he, out or he doesn't need sleep because he's an elf really. So he can wander around the town thinking is whatever thoughts he wishes to yeah um, for for some period of time and everyone else i assume goes to the rooms that evening uh mm -hmm. all right um we'll go uh it's going to be an opposed so i need an awareness check from both um uh, Talzrit and from Karen Thier. Awareness okay. checks. So I got a six. I have a seven awareness. Nice. So 22. That's as high as I can get. 22. And you got a six plus seven is 13. And what level are you? Oh, wait. Uh, level 11. 
So plus three. Plus three, 16. Okay. And these are... Wait, how did you determine that number? What's your TS on your awareness? 11. So 11 plus 3 is 14. I thought he rolled a 20. Yeah, you got I 20. rolled a 6. Yeah, so 20. Because it's your TS plus 3 for your level plus your roll. Sorry, so I got 25. Level 11. It's not your level. It's your level modifier plus 3. Oh, okay, okay. So 11 plus 3 plus 6 is 20. Right. And you say you got a 25? Because you've got I didn't 50. know it was on TS. Yeah. yeah it's on TS. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm 12 5 on TS. Right. Okay. So you must have what'd you have? A 50, you've got a 15 TS plus three. So it's 12 plus three is 15 plus 10 yeah, max. No, I rolled a 10. 25. All right. Uh seven. Um, 12, it's 22, and 8, 20. All right. Um, you wake up, parent dear, uh, or I should say, come out of whatever state you're in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is a, um, shadowed form in your room, um, moving at you. So you will gain an init. Um, like on... when you say shadowed form, you mean like a dark figure in the shadows or like an actual shadow, a dark figure in the shadows. Okay. And you can see it as wolven in its shape. Wolven. Yep. Uh oh, <laughs> And uh, that, that to, werewolf we fought. Just, <laughs> just as you come around the cor uh, one of the corners, um, Talisrit, uh, uh, you see uh, one too. Oh, uh, I think I what was that the like, dwarf? <laughs> as in, like, it looks like a dog, but bigger, or like a humanoid wolf? A humanoid wolf. You fought gotcha. one within the last week. Yeah. That's a smell yeah, I yeah. couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, that's the smell. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Whoops. Like, Bangy dog. <laughs> but you both got your uh, awarenesses amazingly against them. So you do get a nit. So we'll take a, an init for Armier and a, uh, I'm sorry, for Carinthir and for Talisry. Carinthir gets a eight, seven plus one. Uh, and I get a 10, seven plus three. Okay. And, and you know these things are nasty. Okay. Uh, first one gets a 15. And the second one gets a 10. But it's going to go before Talisrit because it's got a higher init uh, modifier. So they both go first. So the first one jumps at Carinthir, flashing twice with its claws. Uh, and you do you would not have your armor on because you're in your right. Um so uh, it's got a nine that's going to miss, but a three is going to hit. And uh, it does minimum damage, nine points, which without your armor, I'd, you might still even be able to take. I don't know what your WT adds for that armor, but yeah. Uh, the armor WT is two, so nine. So no, he doesn't. Yep, you're good. Somehow you get away and it shreds some of the bed and snarls at you. Um, Jesus Christ! <laughs> one hit against uh, Halsrit, and he gets a uh, fourteen for damage. That's that's one wound. Slashes at you, and you come stumbling back uh, away from as it comes ah! out of the alleys at you. And then it is Halsrit. Uh. So I, I can't. Do we? Did we determine last time if the if magical weapons hurt it or just silver? Uh, they did not hurt it very very much. If they did hurt it at all, 
Which which magical weapons? Magical weapons. So the next question is, did fucking Dromer give me my javelin I'm sure. back? Yeah, I'm sure he really did. Really a yeah. dick about it and wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's just Joby and Joe. Yes, you've got your javelin back. Okay, cool. So I so I drag that thing out and uh, try to. I can use it like a melee spear, right? Like I don't mm-hmm. have to. It's just, throw it's it. just light. Yeah, it's just a okay. Light. So I. You like this, Wolf Boy? You like this? Right. (laughs) So I'm going to sort of stab, stab, stab if I can. Uh, So let's see. I roll the four. Um, My melee is a nine. Uh, That's going to hit. He's got a DT of four, but you're okay. That still hits. Okay. So that's a 1D10 plus two is seven. Nope. You can nope. see it slash it across it. Make an awareness check. Just standard. Not opposed. Uh shit. Uh eight, but my my awareness is seven, my RS. So you see nothing. So you you slash, don't do any damage. Good. Karen Thier. And there's only one attack. Oh, it's one. a light it's... weapon, but it's only one oh, attack. No, you it gets two attacks. Two. two attacks if it's a light weapon. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay, cool. Well, is it a light weapon? Yeah. Yeah. Right. One D ten. Right. Ooh, one. Hey. And a seven. So I did not confirm it. Uh, but that is nine plus two is eleven. Nope. Yeah, I'm fucked with this thing. It's not. Good. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't do enough damage. Light. Yeah. Even if it could get through, you got to push it. Yeah, that's that's it. Or critical it. Uh, you right. slash it twice. Some of the hair flies. Um, but otherwise, nothing happens to it. Go to Karen theory. The darkness never ends in the east. <laughs> I'm, no. gonna, I'm gonna light this room up <laughs> the secret oh, no. <laughs> yeah well you paid enough for it so it should be able to replace everything in it <laughs> uh, <laughs> paid more six, than anybody six should be good uh no it misses oh because they have a four dt four dt you need a five <laughs> so that, i assume that is just standard heavy so that's three yeah but that will take you out for a round. <laughs> the fire blows out. You can see it dodges and you blow. Uh, I mean, the whole area, is, the whole room lights up with the fire, but most of it comes in one way and you can see the window <laughs> blows out of the side. Um, everyone that is asleep can now make an awareness check. Um, and Talisrit's on the street, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I'm out by myself. He's out city somewhere, yeah. Mm. Yeah, where where on the map am I? I don't even know where I wandered to. Uh, roll a d4. If you have one available. I do. Four. Uh, you are here. You are by 13, which is... The Potter? The Potter Shop. Nice. Just about as far away from us as you can be. The potter. You guys are all here. <laughs> you just blew out a window on, under the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did everyone else uh, who made an awareness check have it made? I, I, got a, I failed. I got, a three. I, got a, I got a ten. Okay, Milo's I got, got a sleeping full hard. Yep, I got, I a, got a five. Habit. I made it. Okay, Dromer, you wake up out of a dead sleep. Uh, uh, I got a uh, uh, Armier got a one, and what'd you get? A uh, three. A three. So you guys were not a. You were not asleep. <laughs> we, we weren't asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Uh, it was nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Pay no attention to whatever it was. Um, the. Uh, so you you hear it, Dromer. You hear something. Some kind. Of, it sounds kind of like an explosion almost. Um, but you're unsure what it what it is, and the whole inn probably vibrates. Milo, he just rolls over. So. <laughs> After his big meal, you say, "Yep, hey. my apple pie, my hot apple cider. Uh, I'm out cold." <laughs> He's drooling on the pillow right now. The uh, um, so then it would be uh, well, I'll take a nits for everyone that made it, just so we know where you're at. Uh, five for Enzo. Armier gets a 13. Wow, that's hot. And Dromer? 10. 10. Okay, so we'll go uh, back to... 
Uh, we'll go to the fight first and then take everybody else. So uh, the two creatures, the one jumps against uh, Karen there, hits once, and uh, 16 points. That's going to give you a wound. Slash. Uh, drives you backwards. It growls. Uh, the one on the street, an eight and a five. So the five is going to hit, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these things are nasty. Uh, and it does 17 points. Slash. To me? Yep. Talos writ. That's, uh, a, the, that's another wound. Then we'll take Talos writ outside. Uh, I am going to... I, so I look around. Are there any windows in the Potter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I dive. I, I'm gonna s jump through the window if I can. Do you have athletics? Uh, no. no. Okay, you can dive through, but you're gonna take damage. We'll see what the damage. You might resist it, but so you, okay. it'll take one d10 for diving through. I have the boots of balance. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty nice. You, <laughs> you're balanced as you go right through the thing. Well, they give me they give me a plus five to acrobatics, which is acrobatic. Acrobatic. so that works. Yes, so you can make that and take no damage without a roll. So five. Okay, or less. cool. So it gives you five. So five or less is what you're going to try to roll in a detail. Oh, okay. I got a four. So yeah, Psh, you make a tumbling. Psh, through come up looking cool as you do so as the boots <laughs> but no, I it's not like he's in a it's not like he's in a pottery shop or anything where everything is just going to get shattered yeah. <laughs> yeah. somehow with that roll on those boots he avoids everything just taking out the window and then you see a pot falls uh, <laughs> <laughs> then the wolf comes through not knocks today <laughs> right. yeah i mean he's if he follows me in this place yeah. is going down uh, the next person to go then is Karen Thier, who's out because he used a heavy. Uh, then we'll go to Armir. Um, he grabs uh, his his blade and uh, I guess uh, throws open the door. Um, what are you up to, Enzil? Uh, I think Enzil's going to try to grab her buckler and her blade. Just to give me a little bit more <laughs> of a wound threshold there. Yeah. yeah. I see them next to each other. So, all right. What's the okay. chance that there's a that there's a kiln mid firing in this? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't. Uh, it would probably be outside, not inside. Right. It would, uh, yeah, it'd probably be out in the back of this place. I mean, I also assume that maybe Ansel's looking for some clothing. <laughs> I have a suspicion. <laughs> Just the buckler. Just the buckler. Just the, the buckler. <laughs> so, so drummer comes out and gets an eyeful of two people he didn't want to have an eyeful <laughs> poor, poor drummer comes out he'll throw his chain shirt on and grab his uh axe but it's no a, pants it's a smart move <laughs> he starts get, getting his stuff on grabbing his kick in the bed kick in the bed as i'm doing it all right and uh we'll go back again i guess to the top so we'll go uh towels writ um yeah, that's going to be it. I'm going to do a door attack. The door explodes in. Shards of it going in. As the, awesome. the wolf comes busting in, but of course can't attack you. But uh, bust See, in. that's how we beat him. You just keep running. <laughs> yeah. They're probably quicker than us. Oh, All right. yeah. oh, that's true. Uh, uh, and then we go to uh, the one on Karen here. Slashes at him twice. A nine and a two. I can't get two low rolls. Uh, but a nine and eight is 17. So that's another wound. That's another wound. <laughs> Flashes you, throws you up against a door. <sighs> Flickers of flame still lick at the uh, the window. Pain has been blown out by you. <laughs> um, but then we go back to Talisrit. Uh, I'm going to, and I'm just assuming this is what the potter's shop looks like, is that there are several shelving racks between me and this thing that just came through the door. And I'm going to push it over like the library shelves and see if yeah. I can knock them onto them. Uh, okay, make a uh, physical save. Ah, as you put your back into six. one. Of and my physical is nine. So you got a six? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it tumbles over. You hear the shattering of pottery um, as it falls on top of it. 
uh, it can make a physical save to try to get out of the way of it. I, can uh, I, is that my action? Can I still move? That is your action. So I jump back out the window then. I'm outside again. No, I'm saying your action is to tumble the thing over on it. Oh, okay. It's okay. already gone, so it, it's going to get a negative to its roll. So it missed. So you 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 shatter it on top of it. So it tumbles over on top of it. Take a round to get out. out. And now you're standing there, but it's underneath stuff at this point. Um, Karen Thier, back to you. All right, same thing. All right. Three. I am a keeper of the secret fire. And I would like to get some sleep. <laughs> you don't need sleep. The only yeah. one that's getting any sleep is Milo. Yeah, true enough. <laughs> He's got the hood oh, covered not bad. up over his head. He's out. He just puts 19, a pillow over his head. Yeah. 19 and 11. 30. That's one wound. And that's bullshit. <laughs> that's, but it's Matt. It's, wow. Well, and you can wound. see it smokes, but it howls at you. I do one wound every other round. Right? These things are nasty. Straight up nasty. At least uh, you wounded it. Yeah, you did wound it. Its blood was on the leaves. <laughs> the big man wounded it. <laughs> uh, the next person to go then after it would be um, Armir. Oh, and that's another three CC. Uh, he can run down and throw the door to your room. Um, roll a d10. One to five, it's locked. Six to ten, you didn't lock it. Karen theory, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Eight. So you did not lock it. So he's That's able to good. throw the door open <laughs> and see what's in there. Another beast. Um, and then after him throwing the door open, it would be Enzel, who comes skipping around him. And you can see just inside is a one of these uh, werewolves. It looks over at you, its eyes blazing. Do I have room to slip in and smack it? Um, if you make a uh, athletics, do you have athletics? No, I do not. No, you cannot. Okay. You could move in to be able to attack next round. Or you're, you're there, basically, to be able to attack I'm next there. round. Yeah. Uh, uh, Milo, you can make another awareness, see if they've finally woken you out of your slumber. I don't want to wake up, though. I know you do. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> terrible. Drama kicked your bed, though. Oh, yeah. He's in the same room. Oh, yeah. That's right. He kicked your bed. Yeah, you woke up. Uh, what? Mr. <laughs> Leave me alone. I've eaten too much. <laughs> you wolves, grab your fork. <laughs> so Someone's you in your, trouble. Uh -huh. Midnight your, snack. You got They'll your be fine. On. So you can throw the door as you argue with Milo, who just pulls the covers back over his head. Um... And then we go back to the top. Um, the wolf outside uh, starts busting itself through the um, various pottery that's covering it. And then it is uh, the one on Karen Thier, unless he wants to turn on anyone else. Um, we'll go one, two, three, two. One. Karen Thier, he's still after Karen Thier. So he takes two attacks at him. A two and a five, both of those are going to hit. And he does a nine, which we've established is not a wound, but the other one is 13, so he gets a wound. Okay, I'm in the negs. And then it is Talzrit. Um, I'm going to jump out the window, but I, like, grab on the thing and try to flip up onto the roof. Ooh, roll your acro. Ah, fuck. Nine. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's, it's those pull up videos in the doorways, and you just slam down. <laughs> yeah. He hits right across his back on the small room. Ah. Oh, oh. The TikTok video. Oh, he goes falling outside. Oh, because that one didn't work. Uh, but you did manage to get out. Well, roll odd or even. Even is inside, odd is outside. Five. So I'm outside. Outside. So you fell outside. <laughs> At least you're on the street. Um, so then after you is Karen Thier, who doesn't have an attack. Uh, Armir, he can run in and take a shot with his sword. Uh, he's going to put uh, three CCV into it. And gets a one. Woo! Seven. No crit. Damn. But he does 16 and 5, 
21, and then he's got three lightning. 21, 31. Well, it doesn't matter. There's no way I'm going to get two wounds, but he did wound him. <laughs> he howls as lightning uh, strikes into it, sending it back a step, and then it is Enzel's. All right, let's, uh, let's get a heavy smite going. No, I don't get heavy smite going. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Wow! Yep. You do, you do yeah. spend the CCV for that. It's still two CCV. Yep. You must have. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can actually hit this guy. That's a two, so I can at least hit him. Yep. Okay. Two. And fire. Where's that? Six. 21. 21. Uh, it's nothing. Cool. Love it. And then after you, uh, Dromer. Come running down the hole. Come running down the hole. So you're in there, but you can't attack. And then we go back to the top again. Well, the one that was, oh, yeah. The towel is right here outside. So it comes busting out uh, the front door, searching for you. Well, let's see. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make an awareness. Do you have stealth? Yes, seven. Let's see if you can roll your stealth. You fumbled getting on the roof, but maybe you got out and they didn't know Four. where you were. Uh, you can hear it smashing stuff inside, so it doesn't know you got out. Cool. And then the one on the inside... <laughs> Uh, call, odd ass away. call odd or even, uh, Karen Thier. Yeah, hello, crawl your way back. Oh, to the for end. what? I'll, I'll call even. I don't know what I'm calling, but even. So the wolf is still attacking you. One hit, uh, 17 points. Damn. Yep. It's tearing him up. And then it is Karen Thier's. You're back. Okay, same thing. Um, there's no, there's, use no point push. To push. There's, there's no use in pushing because yeah. you can't get enough. But you, yeah, you're, you're basically doing one wound if you hit him. But yeah, yeah. Uh, four. Yep. <clears throat> Maybe ten, eighteen, and eleven. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. It's just enough to hurt him. <laughs> Wounds him. Damn. Oh, no, I'm out again. And um, unless Armir takes an, a, a burn wound, he can't do that fire again. Or he can't do the li full lightning. If he pushes, can he do enough? He's going to push and use one, one last CCV for one lightning, so he's going to get four dice on him. Hit with a four. So it's 40, 10, plus 5. Uh, 18, 24, 25, 30. Wound. And Enzil. All right. Let's try that smite again. Or you, you could push. That's better. That's... You, could, you, could also put, uh, you could also add flame. Yeah, which I'm definitely doing. Um, I did get the smite, okay. so that's good. And then, yeah, I guess I better, I guess I better push. Yeah, push. So that give you forty okay. ten plus six, 40, maybe. 10. Uh, so yeah. You're normally plus four, but with the smite, you're plus two more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh. You still have to hit. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> if you're rolling damage, that's all well and good. That's, that's a that's a three. That's a three. Okay. Uh let's see. Technicalities. 30. 30 is a wound. He falls. Yes. 
Hey. Jesus. You can see he transforms back into the guy you saw working at the stable that watched you come in. He's dead there. Um, <laughs> and Halsrit, are you running? Um, yeah, but is the is the kiln is there a kiln? If it is, it's on the other side of the building. You never saw it. Okay, so no, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run, and I have a I I have a the warden's cloak, which gives me plus two to stealth. So my TS is really high. So roll roll it on oh. a pose. Yeah, go for it. Stealthing. Um, it over what's your yeah? Well, it's, my it's TS my, plus three plus a D10. Okay, so I just rolled a nine on the D10. So, okay, what's your TS? My TS is thirteen point five. The 13, so 22, 22, 25. Plus three, 25. Good roll. Right. Right. You lose it. <laughs> I assume you're going back to the... Uh, yeah. 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 And bust in there. That innkeeper is going to be pissed that <laughs> he took our money. <laughs> well, now he can rebuild his inn. Right. That's true. He's got enough for it. Every at seven o'clock, everyone gets two thousand two hundred twenty-five exp. How much? Two thousand two twenty-five, and one faded point. Ugh. <laughs> and the wolves are still after you, but you got one of them, bastards. Man, fifty-nine When Drummer gets in the room, can he make the? Connection between the smells. Uh, I can give you another save. Uh, no, you missed it. Ah. <laughs> There's too much fire in here for you to note it, and lightning and burn flesh. I'll just pull a tackle berry and start hitting my head against the wall. Missed, missed the gunplay. <laughs> gun so, so it was gunplay, sir. So close, so close. <laughs> Milo will be like, "See, I told you everything would be fine." <laughs> His over here there's like bleeding out. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> He's yeah. the dark carrying through the dark anyway. So <laughs> we'll stop the recording. <laughs>